Before you watch the video I'm about to show you of the rocket launch I recorded, if you're using a smartphone or any mobile device, a tablet, I highly recommend you wear earbuds when you listen to this audio. I use this Zoom H5 microphone to record the, record the audio. It's uh, very high quality, it records a lot of low frequencies very well, has a high decibel tolerance. Um, if you're on a PC and you got a subwoofer, that's okay too. I'd still recommend wearing earbuds though. They seem to work best even over the earmuff style headphones. So I'm going to come back at the end of this video and I'm going to talk about my experience at the Saturn V Center because for those of you who are thinking about going to see a rocket launch and you want to record it, this is going to be some information you might want to know. So without further ado, here's a rocket launch. Go of course. Watch the pad. There we go. Lift off, Falcon 9, JC Sat 18, Pacific 1, there it goes. We have lift off. Going to the east, over the ocean. And here comes the rumble. Get ready. Sound will get here in a second. Here we go. Should be getting separation of that. Coming up in 20 seconds. There we go. The, the uh, core stage. You'll see it on the screen too, but you see if you see it, that, that light will, will basically kind of flicker and go out. And then, uh, and then the so trajectory is looking good. Core stage will Still disconnect. Full power. It'll start to boost back, coming back down. Upper and stage engine turns, turns on. Be good. Stage seven. Well, you can see it on the screen there. That's that's what it looks like. Right there. So there. That's the engine working on the four stage. The position of the big bottom part of the rocket to land on the barge. It does two of those burns to bring it down and land on the barge. So we're coming up with it uh, just a minute or two. Two minutes to go, roughly, and then we'll do two burns. Another burn later. The engine will shut down for a while. But uh, it's going to go to a coast uh, portion of the uh, flight. And then here's the barge. Here we go. Here we go. Watch. Watch the barge. It's the lights over the shadow. Let's see if it lands. But then, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
So I really hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did, especially being there, seeing a rocket launch in person for the first time. That was pretty neat. Um, there are a few things I want to talk about with my experience that might be helpful to those who are thinking about going there to see a launch, and especially if you're going to be uh, trying to photograph it or record it. Uh, in other words, if you're bringing like a tripod there and you're not going to be sitting in bleachers or anything and you're going to be standing up or, or whatever. Um, so a couple things get out of the way first. Uh, we went to the Saturn V Apollo uh, Center, which is only accessible by bus. You have to pay extra to get there. Uh, so you have to first buy your Kennedy Space Center tickets to go there. And on top of that, you pay an extra fee to go see whatever, um, depending on where the viewing locations are available. And for us, it was only 20 bucks a person. Thank goodness we didn't pay over $400 there, there was like a feel the heat package that flight got canceled well it got moved actually and if we had spent that much money and I had the same experience I had I would have never went back probably uh, that was a, not a really good experience for for paying that much money for the amount of money we paid only $20 a person I would say that's no problem with that but my experience in particular was where I was a little bit upset. Me and my girlfriend, uh, we went and saw this launch. It was, you know, the uh, the SpaceX Falcon 9 uh, launching this satellite. And we had planned originally to go see the uh, Atlas V, I think, and they had moved the date. Um, three or four times they moved the date. So there was no way, because it was towards the end of the trip, there's no way we were going to be able to see it because we were already basically home at that point. Uh, the Falcon I, it's it's a pretty awesome rocket, even if even the Falcon Heavy, basically the same thing with two boosters on it. Uh, the the Falcon 9, because it has that booster that detaches and returns, uh, it comes down and it drops through the sound barrier right before it lands and creates a sonic boom. We didn't get to experience that because the booster landed like 400 miles out to sea so there's no chances of hearing anything when it's that far away. Normally it would land right back on Cape Canaveral and you would hear a sonic boom. And I thought that'd be pretty cool because I've never seen in person like a fighter jet break the sound barrier and hear a sonic boom. I know some people don't think it's that special, but, you know, it's just something cool. But uh, the experience at the Saturn V Center as far as being a videographer or photographer is not what I expected. Um, so we get there. And they have a ton of bleachers. It's all one big long bleacher, basically. Down in front of the bleachers, you have a cement pad, which extends out to the fence. And that's about 15 to 20 feet in front of the first seat bleacher, the lowest one, 15 to 20 feet out to the fence. And as far as how long it is, um, I don't know if I had to guess, it's probably like uh, 800 feet long, 1,000 feet long, maybe at the most. But there, anyways, there's, you can fit a lot of people in there. The cement pad in front that extends from the first bleachers up to the fence, uh, it's, it's all open. And it looks like you could just go stand up there and set up next to the fence. And along the fence, you also have these little zones uh, that are about big enough to fit two or three wheelchairs next to each other. And they're, they're basically masked off with paint and a little wheelchair symbol so that that's reserved for the handicapped. Well, I set up between those in an open area that wasn't marked off or anything. And I got my tripod set up and all that stuff. It was Everything was going pretty smoothly. You know, it's a little bit the setup with the three cameras I had. Um, the, uh, the, the Yi 4K action cam, the Canon 70D, my, my main DSLR pretty much, and the Canon SX50HS, which I pretty much just have that for the, the super zoom on it. Um, I got everything set up uh, with the Zoom H5 microphone as well. I was almost done. I was just kind of fin uh, finagling a few things. And this guy comes up from security and says, uh, you can't be here because you're blocking the view from the bleachers. Well, I mean, my head, if you are sitting in the bleacher, if you look you know, over my head, that's pretty much like the horizon way out there, six miles out. Um, so I'm only really blocking the view of the launch pad, which in most people can barely see with the naked eye at six miles anyways. Um, 
And besides, once the rocket launches off that pad, it's pretty much over anybody's head who's standing at, at, at that fence. But he basically says, you can't be here because you're blocking the view from the bleachers. And I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, where do I have to go? He's like, well, you have to go all the way to either ends of the fence, all the way down there or all the way down there. I'm like, okay. So I go all the way to the end. I start getting set up. This is not a very good spot because, uh, you know, there there's a big uh, display, like a big sign, um, the video screen, I guess you want to call it. That's blocking like a view of this, like half the view of the sky from where I'm, where I'm at. I'm like, I tried looking at the other end and there just wasn't any good uh, viewing locations from the way at the other end because there was tall grass in the way and I wanted to zoom in on the launch pad with my uh, super zoom. So I, I stayed at the one end, the all the way to the other side. And there were some other people that had tripods as well. They started setting up in that area. We're all, there's probably 10 of us, like all crammed to this one little corner because you say there's like this invisible line on the edge of the bleacher that goes up to the fence that nobody can see uh, that you have to be, you have to be beyond that because you can't be in front of any, the bleachers whatsoever. But this corner is like really, really tiny. And there's in front of it, there's a, uh, there was a handicap spot as well. So you really couldn't even stand over there. You had to stand outside the handicap spot and around it. And I was crammed up into this little tiny spot that, that my tripod didn't even fit in. I had to put my leg of the tripod through the fence to be able to set up right there in that corner. And I'm lucky I set up there when I did because there was a, a bunch of other people around there trying to set up as well. And, you know, you can only fit so many people there with cameras before you start getting in the way of somebody else. So... We're all crammed there. There was maybe a few people at the other end, at the other way, way down at the other corner. You can't set up. You can't stand there at the front of the fence. You can't stand there uh, with, even if you don't have a camera, it doesn't matter. You can't stand there by the fence, even though it looks like you can. They say that entire fence is reserved for handicapped and special needs people, even though they have designated spots that are masked off for the handicap. So we're like, okay. Well, we'll deal with it. Well, meanwhile, it's probably like 10 minutes to launch, and we have been standing there for two, over two hours. You know, can you imagine waiting that long and you're just holding your spot? You know, all everything's riding on this one moment that almost may or may not happen because it might delay it, right? So you, there's a lot riding on that moment. So we're standing there, and I wasn't really in any problem area because I did what they told me to do which is cram yourself into the corner at the furthest end where you have like the probably the worst possible view. Um, there's two guys, like I think there was two, maybe two or three guys standing on the outside of this handicap spot, which is which was at that corner. And they were standing right on the edge of it. They didn't want to encroach on it because, you know, you want to reserve it, even though there was no one actually in that spot that was handicapped. They were right on the edge of it, but the bleachers... This is a kind of a hard representation to do with my hands here, but you have the edge of the bleachers and then you have like this, you know, this open area goes up to the fence and then you have right here is where the handicap spot is. And then this is about the space you have right here between the edge of the bleachers and where the handicap spot is. And there was a two or three guys standing right there and like there were probably just a tiny bit in front of the edge of the bleachers, which was blocking basically nobody's view. And so, some lady from the um, it's the center or the a security guard, I'm not really sure which, came over and said, you guys need to move your block into the bleachers. They didn't say it to me, they said to the other guys. And they're like, are you kidding me? Like, we have crammed ourselves in this corner already. We did what you, we were supposed to do, what you told us we couldn't stand up anywhere in front of the fence here to, to do what we need to do. Like, no, we're not moving. You know, everyone here paid for their seat to be here. And what do you expect? Like, do you think people aren't going to show up with cameras and tripods? There were some people in the bleachers. A very few people had tripods in the bleachers. Uh, I didn't want to even attempt to go in the bleachers and set up a tripod because I was assuming that they would say, you can't do that. But there were a few, few people doing that. In my situation, it wouldn't have been a good idea because trying to track a rocket, especially when you have also vibrations possibly from the bleachers with people on there, just didn't want to mess with it. So naturally, we all, you know, we're in the cement area, but we're like, why 
don't you guys have a designated area for people who have tripods and, and who, people who are videographers and photographers who obviously are going to be there all the time for every single launch. They've been doing this for years. Just have an extension on the fenced-in area. Extend it out a little bit. Put a cement pad there or whatever you want to do so you can have a designated spot. Heck, even charge people a little bit more, like 5 or $10 more for the, to be in that particular spot if you're a photographer. It's not like it's not like a movie where you want front row seats or, or at a concert or something like that. You're looking at something that's miles and miles away. So being closer doesn't make any difference. It's just having a view with your camera. If there's obviously someone in front of you, you know, it, it makes it a lot harder. So I don't know why they don't have this. The Apollo, the Apollo Five, whatever Saturn Center, whatever it's called. I don't remember anymore. I'm just I'm so upset. Um, in my situation. It wasn't that bad, but there was a lot of other people who it caused a problem for, and it just made a lot of people angry. Um, I think I said before, there, there's other places that you can go to if they're open, if they're available to buy tickets to. I don't know what those are like, but that's what it was like at the Saturn Five Center. Banana Creek. And if it says, it, I think it even said in there, there's like lawn viewing or something like that, which you weren't even allowed to go on the grass. You couldn't, we, I even asked, like, can I just go down there? Like, no, you can't go down there unless you want to get eaten, eaten by gators, which I didn't see any, but that whole area was also fenced in too. I don't know how the gators would get in there, but it is what it is. If you're planning for a launch, if you're planning to go see a launch, uh, you need to make sure that you have leeway, and I, I, I think I talked about this already. This is the second time I've done this video, actually. Um, but plan it in the beginning of the week, uh, if, or, or plan it like on the first day or the second day when the launch is going to happen, and plan to stay a week. If they move the launch, that we have a safety nut. So I think that's about it. I think I spoke my mind. I think I've made my peace with it. And um, I hope that helps everyone, anyone out there who's planning on going to see a launch who has not done this before, uh, just to be prepared. So that's it for this video. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.